And is that is that Matt Buckley who's coming? He's still alive. I can't believe this. Uh, Matt, can you hear me? I got you loud and clear, John. It's going to take a lot. I can't believe you're still alive with the way you live. <laughs> exactly. Well, I could right back at you. <laughs> uh, you know, it's that's a fair comment. Um, I'm flying Spitfires over the White Cliffs of Dover in about two weeks. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I joined a restoration group and helped finance the restoration of an 80-year-old fighter, and I'm going to be flying it. Wow. That's course, literally I'm the only one who history. knows how to fly it. There's not a lot of tailwheel pilots left. No, there's not a lot of young guys flying that airplane. <laughs> no, none. Hey, what do you think of the new Top Gun movie? Oh, man. Well, I mean, the, the story is just absolutely insanely ridiculous but they make up for it yes yeah they make up for it with the with the actual flying i mean the fact that they actually threw him in a hornet and 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 you know blacked him out a couple times is great but the it to me it was lone survivor meets iron eagle meets behind enemy lines (laughs) you know (laughs) i was thinking how many people are asking the question if this is an impossible to hit target with a plane why don't you just use a damn cruise missile well, I, that's what I laughed about, too. They did that, you know, tomahawk launch. I'm like, why didn't you just tomahawk the site as well? But I know. <laughs> it just didn't, you know, you and I. Yeah, it's willful suspension of disbelief. That's and then that's they, they moved. Um, they moved the Top Gun school 500 miles. They moved it to, to Fernley, Nevada. Oh, yeah. I, I, I went through Top Gun as an adversary up in Fallon and uh, it ain't Miramar. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> that not. is for sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I they, think I used to see you flying over Lake Tahoe doing uh, uh, barrel rolls. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I've done a couple low levels across the lake, and then up uh, up over the top of Squall, and then up towards Pyramid Lake, up there towards uh, right, yeah, the Pyramid Northwest. Is gorgeous, great yeah. shot piercing in, in Pyramid Lake. Hey, mm-hmm. correct me, but isn't it impossible to fly under the radar of a P3C Orion? Yeah, it yeah. I mean, they, they, they make up. a big part of that in the movie, you know, fly under the radar. They'll never see you. I'm going in what world do you not see in a look down radar? No. Well, the, the last time you could fly under the enemy's radar was probably what you're going to do in a Spitfire off I the cliff of World Dover. <laughs> exactly. They ain't no. Well, and even those guys flying up the, you know, up the, that, that uh, canyon or whatever to get to the target site. I mean, hell, even in North Korea, you know, watch the bridges at Toko Ri. They'd string cable across valleys to yeah, prevent right. low-level attacks. So apparently, these guys just invested in SAM sites and not a, a couple cables. <laughs> so. Well, and not only that, these are super SAM sites, which have, the Russians haven't even vented yet. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, they rippled off about twenty of them in the movie, and what? Only one hit. So, uh, and then I they my find an F-14 Tomcat fully fueled <laughs> up, ready to go, battery <laughs> charged. Oh, I was I was laughing because on a good day, on a great day in the United States Navy, it was near impossible to get that airplane in here for it, let you alone in get that thing to fly on our side. No, exactly. And after that thing went down the catapult, it would be a FOD walk down looking at the parts that it left behind. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. No, it was not. It was it was good theater, but you know, I just kind of well, the smiled. flying was good. That's because they use real blue angels to do the flying. Oh yeah, while I while I did the uh, they blew, he, uh, he while I told me he destroyed like some five million dollar camera on one of the low pass the initial low pass they just didn't know what they were getting themselves into and he almost uh, killed uh, everybody. He had a great yeah. compliment for uh, Ed Harris, you know, in the scene where the X ten or whatever it's called, like he's like, dude, on that shot. The, the LSO, sh- you can see it in the movie, the roof like blows off the thing. He's like, that guy barely, everybody else was diving in ditches, rental cars got blown over and everything. That guy did move until they said cut. So he was, yeah. he was, well, that guy stood there detail, that entire time that as he almost got his head cut off. For another 20 years. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, they don't yeah. have a Mach 10 scramjet. They don't exist. No. No, 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 no. Uh, nice but story, though. It, it, it's it's good to know that you can eject in Mach 10 and live. So that's that's a that's a success story <laughs> yeah. right there. I mean, Mach yeah. three is almost impossible to live on an eject. Anyway, no, you, you, um, yeah, your body would vaporize, but it's all <laughs> it it's all good. 
<laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, uh, let me read your intro here. Uh, Matthew Wiz Buckley is the founder of Top Gun Options LLC and Strike Fighter Financial in 2020. Mr. Buckley founded Top Gun Fighter Foundation, a 5013C dedicated to eliminating the tragedy of veteran suicide. Wiz was formerly the managing director of strategy for Peak Six Investments LP, one of the largest volatility arbitrage operations trading firms in the world. He was the founder and CEO of Peak Six Media LLC, the parent company of ONN.TV, the Option News Network, and also internationally recognized speaker on business leadership, execution, and risk management. Wiz teaches the industry leading full throttle options training program and manages four skilled based model portfolios. Solo AMZN or Amazon, primary accelerated retirement and weekly options. He's also a source for the Wall Street Journal, Fox News and uh, CNBC. Uh, so Matt, you have until five minutes before the hour and um, uh, then we'll hand out uh, the next batch of our $100,000 in prizes. And I will be listening here, critiquing your presentation uh, when I get the opportunity. So <laughs> I the, wouldn't have uh, it any other way. <laughs> yeah, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. All right, folks, welcome aboard. Three, two, one, uh, fights on. Let's go ahead and, and get airborne. No distractions. Make sure you silence all that uh, electronic nicotine because... Um, you probably haven't heard yet or, or are going to hear what I'm going to tell you. Uh, so sit up straight and, and uh, pay attention here. Here's our current market condition, okay? Now, if you take a look at that picture, that chart, you don't have to be a master chartist, certified market technician, anybody. You can be you. How many of you think that's a bullish chart? You would buy this with both hands, whatever it is. Does that look bullish to you? Obviously, the, the answer is yes. I'm a political science major, knuckle-dragging uh, fighter pilot. That obviously looks incredibly bullish to me. I would buy whatever that is with both hands. Can we agree with that? Well, Stephen, nice job. You get a gold star. Folks, I'm inverted, right? Just like in the original movie, Top Gun, with uh, Goose and uh, Mav flying inverted over a MiG-28. That's the S&P 500 inverted right now. This is the current market condition, ladies and gentlemen, and it is not good. Well, let me correct myself. It's not good if you don't know what you're doing, right? Uh, who was it? John Wayne in the uh, Sands of Iwo Jima, right? Or, or Sergeant Stryker. Life's tough. It's even tougher if you're stupid. Why am I bringing, why did I show you, you the inverted chart first? Because I still, I still have people going, oh, well, where's the bottom or you know, oh, I'm going to nibble here. I'm going to buy here, whatever. And, you know, this market's going to turn around. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm going to make a prediction. I nailed, uh, I said Joe Biden's sophomore year would be a recession and a bear market. I said that a year and a half ago. And here we are. We are down officially. If you want to use official terms, we're officially in a bear market. Um, down 20% from the highs. Here's a career call I'm going to make. We have another 20% to go before we even consider leveling off and, and kind of moving sideways. And there ain't going to be no V, folks. This isn't, uh, you know, there, uh, a famous guy once said that the, the Fed is both the arsonist and the firefighter, right? So the folks who started this fire, who are trying to put it out, aren't going to come in and start another fire that they're trying to put out. They completely goon this up, folks, and it is only going to get worse. So a lot of you are doing what? <laughs> this is exactly what a lot of you are doing, are ejecting out of this market. I got to be honest with you, folks, Top Gun Options, people are lining up out the door. And that's not me being a businessman. I'm being honest. Why? Because for the past two, three years, everybody is a genius as the market goes up on what? on crack, on insane government spending. I've never before in my life seen a Federal Reserve chairman on 60 Minutes. Remember that 60 Minutes interview a couple of years ago? Jerome Powell. Yeah, I just make money. I, I, I make it. I 
sometimes I print it up and just send it to Federal Reserve Banks or I make it digitally. I just kind of hit enter and money appears out of thin air. That that was one of your <laughs> red flags that something bad uh, was about to happen here, folks. So everybody's a genius. Oh, I, I'm a brilliant trader on the way up. Now is when people start flying. I'm not kidding, man. Text, emails, phone, you know, Facebook Messenger. I know, hey, Wiz, you know, I know we haven't talked since high school, but what do I do with my 401k? Now is the time where you cut your teeth as a good trader, as a good investor, when there's blood in the streets, man. It's sad to say, you know, I tell people at Top Gun Options, I'm half Gordon Gecko, half Wiz in a flight suit. I'll tell you how it feels American. This sucks. And I took my L-39. I own a couple of fighter jet, personal fighter jets. I took it over to Houston for the weekend because I did Marcus Luttrell's podcast uh, on Friday. If you think filling up a, your car is expensive, try filling up a, a fighter jet, man. It is bad. But as an American, people are getting destroyed. Raging inflation is just killing everybody, Right. So it's bad. 401ks are now 201ks. It's bad and it's going to get worse. That's me with America. Now, let me take my flight suit off and put on my $10,000 Armani Gordon Gecko Wolf of Wall Street uh, suit. Good. For every buyer, there's a seller. For every person getting destroyed right now, somebody's printing money. I have zero sympathy for people who are getting their ass handed to them right now. You needed to know what you're doing. You always have to contingency plan. You always have to have an ejection seat. This is a target rich environment for options traders. And I'm having a blast here at Topkin Options. I mean, this uh, took a screenshot of this. What was this yesterday? Before I I have a couple more trades on 40,000 bucks month to date. Pounding the S&P 500 and Amazon into the dirt. We rode the Amazon up pre-split and then we're padding it into the dirt. I think Amazon breaks 100 and sees 85 bucks before it goes higher. We are, there is a lot of pain ahead. All right, I'm going to give you an up-to-date intelligence brief. Why? Because I do not come into these things and go, here are some trades. That is the wrong way to do it. You have, I, I, I call it SOT, strategic, operational, tactical. John's familiar with this from the military man. What's the strategic overview from Ukraine to China, to Russia, to commodities, to oil? Then we'll peel the onion one layer and go a little deeper and get operational. What's going on here in the United States? There's a Fed meeting tomorrow. He might shock the market with a 75-point increase. Um, It would shock me if he doesn't do a 75-point increase. Three or four months ago, when breaking news, inflation at 40-year highs, I looked at everybody in my webinar and I said, okay, should have an emergency Fed press conference sometime later today where he announces a full point increase. I guarantee you it happens. Didn't happen because they're failing. So we'll take a look at operationally what's going on here in the US. And then, and only then, can you get tactical and look at trades. Folks, if you wake up in the morning and put your bunny slippers on and take a sip of coffee and turn on CNBC or Fox Business News to get a trade idea, you're doing it wrong. I guarantee you, S-O-T, strategic, operational, tactical. Talk to you about how I employ options, uh, show you what I'm targeting for max uh, uh, profit. And you literally can turn panic into profit right now, folks. Again, half of me feels bad for people getting wiped out. And the other half of me is, is, is cleaning up as people get wiped out. This is the type of market where you, you really do cut your teeth. Uh, as John said, real quick, that, that's me. I was a Hornet guy, graduated from Top Gun uh, as an adversary pilot. So I was a bad guy. Uh, so at Top Gun, well, the original movie Top Gun, like the Jester and Viper and all those guys, uh, I was an adversary. So I flew the bad guy tactics. You had to be a really, you had to be the best good guy to be selected to be a bad guy because I had to go study all the enemy stuff. I know more on flying and fighting uh, the MIGs and uh, SU-37s uh, than the Hornet at some points. Uh, also flew some combat sorties uh, over Iraq. What's this have to do with trading? Everything. As a young naval aviator, I f- didn't join the Navy to get rich, clearly. Uh, I joined the Navy to serve my country, fly airplanes, and, and, and uh, deliver justice to people who, uh, who needed it. But in the background, 
started. I remember my first $25 check when I went to Naval Air Station Key West down in uh, down here in the Keys. I wrote a $25 check to the USAA Aggressive Growth Mutual Fund. That was a lot of money for me as an ensign in 1991. And then my beautiful, who became my beautiful bride, my girlfriend at the time, it seems like she kept Ann Taylor in business and I paid the American Express bill. I'm like, why am I paying somebody a to do a mutual fund with all these fees. Why can't I just buy American Express and Antel? Short story long, I started applying everything I was learning as a fighter pilot, having a strategy, implementing tactics, contingency planning, managing risk. Hold on. This guy's a Navy fighter pilot, flew off aircraft carriers over Iraq. He's, he's going to talk to me about managing risk. Yeah. Fighter pilots are some of the least risk. <laughs> we, we are the most risk averse people on the planet. Flying jets off of a carrier over a bad guy country is dangerous enough without being stupid, right? So we try and minimize all known risks. So I applied all of that to my trading uh, and it worked uh, with incredible results. Uh, got out of the Navy, went to the airlines, September 11th, the morning of September 11th was supposed to be my first flight as a pilot for American Airlines. Uh, got furloughed a week later and that was it. I popped, I had to get serious. I'm like, I'm furloughed. I lost my job at the airlines, I'm unemployed, thankfully, or maybe not. Uh, I don't want to say thankfully, uh, but it, the Lord took care of me. Why? Because our reserve squadron got mobilized. First time a Navy reserve fighter squadron had been mobilized for combat since the Korean War. So I, I became a full-time reserve bum to pay my bills and feed my wife and my son. But during that time, I popped up on the radar of the largest volatility arbitrage firm headquartered uh, right there in the uh, Chicago uh, Board of Trade. You see these big, beautiful windows right here? That was our uh, trading firm. Uh, I, I just I had an absolute blast uh, when I was there. I helped build a hedge fund. That's our trading floor. Helped build a hedge fund when I was there. I helped build the retail brokerage uh, options house, which got swallowed up by uh, E-Trade. Um, uh, and you know, I, I'd laugh when I say this, but I was Eddie Murphy in trading places guy off the streets thought I was a little old retail trader, but I'm telling you, man, when I went to wall street, there is no such thing as the smart money. We are the smart money, the COVID crash. I predicted that to the day when Donald Trump looked at the TV in Davos on January 22nd and lied Joe Kiernan. Hey, what's up with this thing in China, this like virus or this flu? It's not coming here. Why are you even asking me that? Dumb question. It's dumb. You know, move on. Not coming here. I looked at, I was doing a live brief and I said, get out of the market. Buy puts on the S&P 500. Get long the VIX right now. And the market imploded. There is no such thing as the smart money. Do you remember uh, Ray Dalio at that same Davos conference after Trump? Cash is trash. You remember that? They all got it wrong as the market imploded. Even Donald Trump sent out a tweet one day. Oh, market's looking good. Here, I'd buy. The next day, the Dow was down 3,000 points. The smart money does not exist anymore. We are the smart money. So uh, help run that fund, uh, firm, uh, did the Options News Network. Top Gun Options, 13 years, 10,000 investors, all skill levels. We have a couple investment clubs called Max Afterburner and the Hunters. Uh, on the training side of the fence, what I'm going to talk to you about today is trading volatility in our full throttle program. And over on the uh, the investment club side, we have a couple investment clubs. I want to blow through this stuff real quick. Author wrote two books from sea level to sea level and then COVID crash from panic to profit. I wrote a book about how we nailed the COVID crash and got it right. And we literally made millionaires here. I do some charity work, the Broward Shores Advisory Council. I lost a sister to a drunk driver um, when she was 19. So I work with Mad, and as John alluded to, uh, the biggest thing, the, the thing that I'm most proud of right now is No Fallen Heroes. It is a documentary film about uh, veterans uh, going down to uh, Mexico and treating our own uh, PTSD, unfortunately, using entheogenic uh, therapy. So No Fallen Heroes is just a, it's an, you can go to nofallenheroes.com. You can watch our trailer. Uh, that's me and Marcus on Friday. Everybody should know who Marcus Luttrell is. Marcus and I did the medicine last year. Uh, Marcus, myself, Jared Taylor. Anybody know Black Rifle Coffee? So Jared Taylor is one of the guys that started Black Rifle Coffee. He's one of my best friends now. So me, Marcus, Jared, and two other guys uh, did this entheogenic medicine. Uh, and now I'm making a documentary about it. It's just 
it, it'll blow you away. Go to nofallenheroes.com uh, and check out what we do. Uh, one of our guys in the movie was up at the Pennsylvania State House last week pushing for the legalization for therapeutic use uh, of this medicine. So uh, do me a favor when you get a chance. It has nothing to do with investing. It has everything to do with saving veterans' lives. You ready for this? 22 veterans a day kill themselves. And I think that number is low. That number is from 2019. What happened since then? A scandemic and an Afghanistan absolute surrender implosion horror. My phone was ringing off the hook after Afghanistan. There are more guys and gals killing themselves. It's a national disgrace. So my mission objective with No Fallen Heroes is to bring that number uh, down. Peggy, uh, I did what is called Ibogaine, I-B-O gain, G-I-A-I-N-E, and uh, 5-M-E-O DMT. Um, make, uh, so the, the podcast I did with Marcus is coming out uh, next month. So keep an eye out for that. So Because this is the first podcast where Marcus Luttrell has come out publicly and uh, talked about his healing process. I, I did not know I was as messed up as I was, as John can probably attest to. Every landing aboard an aircraft carrier is a car crash. Every catapult shot, you go from zero to 200 miles in a second and a half. And pulling Gs, nine, eight, seven Gs for 15 years, I had a lot of, I had a lot of issues. And that medicine saved my life. Um, so that's the No Fallen Heroes Project. All right. That's who I am. I never go to these things and jump in and go, hey, look at all the trades that I'm doing. If you don't know who's going to teach you how to trade or their background or anything like that, why would you? I just don't, you know. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't get it. Peter, is he ever going to start this presentation? I'm starting right now, Peter. I'm sorry I wasted your time. Dave, go to nofallenheroes.com. Uh, so because Peter wants us to start, we'll go ahead and start. So folks, I'm going to make a prediction right now. We have another 20% down to go in the market, period. This gap on the S&P 500 is going to be filled. You see this right here? You see that right there? That is another 20% lower. We are going, I'm going to make a prediction between now and November, the S&P 500 is going to go all the way down here, right around 30, let's just round up, 3,400. I absolutely am convinced to, that this is going to happen. You see this dark space right here? Let me just grab my little marker here. I'm going to draw a little delta. You see that delta right there? That is going to be filled. Period. I guarantee you it's going to be filled. We are, we are in a lookout below moment here when it comes to uh, what's going on uh, in the market. Let me, you know, when the Drudge Report, you might not like the Drudge Report or anything like that, but it, it's a pretty damn good, um, let me minimize that. Let's go, you know, when the Drudge Report is just full of this stuff, top left, wholesale inflation. Did you see PPI come out today? Where is it? Look at PPI and core PPI. This is like the Fed's main barometer, altimeter, whatever you want to call for what inflation it's doing. It's insane. Wholesale inflation, 10.8%. Market route evokes memories of Lehman Brothers. Property values falling across the USA. Ladies and gentlemen, between now and November, another shoe to drop will be the housing market. I, I logged on a little early and heard John's probably going over to Ukraine to help people out. You know what Ukraine does, folks? Fertilizer, crops. My God, man, if you think the baby milk or baby formula shortage was bad, wait until it's a food shortage. I was out in Houston. I was out at the, uh, at the Luttrell Ranch. Dude, he's, he, he's, he doesn't trade. He's got a ranch. He's got cattle. He's like, whiz. I, you literally can't get fertilizer. And if you can, it's like a thousand times more than it was a year ago, guys. This is insane. So let alone the housing market. Why is the housing market going to uh, burst? Uh, interest rates going up. Personal friend of my, of my wife, Susie, and I got laid off from her uh, mortgage company yesterday. No warning. I kind of gave her a warning. I told her to start looking for another job. Half this mortgage company, about 50 people. Guy owned uh, uh, up at Delray Beach, gone. The housing market is going to implode. I guarantee it. Fed nightmare, jumbo rate rise, crypto winner, digital fortunes vanishing, world's richest lose 1.4 trillion. Guys, it just does not. It, somebody tell me what you're bullish on. 
this this is awful. I you know people killing people, man. Um, this is this is heartbreaking to me on both sides. You might hate the the Russians, the Soviets, whatever you want to call them, but I guarantee you those nine, 18, 19, 20 year old Russian kids whose parents didn't even know they were conscripted that are getting turned into hair, teeth, and eyeballs is just as much of a tragedy. Vladimir Putin, I, I, I don't want to wish ill on anybody, but allegedly the guy is ill. We need peace in Ukraine. So I'm trying to help you out with where I'm kind of bullish. I, want to, I don't want to get super political, but maybe in November, if there's some massive red wave, the market will respond like, okay, we're going to pump the brakes on kind of the, the clown car in DC. So that might be a potential pull out of a nosedive or peace in Ukraine. But does anybody believe there's peace in Ukraine coming anytime soon? Anybody? I, I, hell, I think the only guy on the face of the planet is the Pope recently that said, uh, can, can, can we kind of maybe not kill each other anymore and maybe talk a little bit? I mean, hell, Henry Kissinger caught a lot of flack last week or two weeks ago for saying what? You probably should kind of give them whatever sliver of land that they have, and then let's try and negotiate a little bit. The blue checks online went nuts that he actually suggested that. But nobody, at least during the Cuban Missile Crisis, at least Kennedy kind of stiff-armed, but also talk, kept talking to Khrushchev. Nobody's talking to Putin. I think Macron's the only dude over in Europe who's trying to talk to the guy every once in a while. Here's why I'm rambling about this. A cornered Putin. So state media in the past month, the Secretary of Defense, whatever that title is, Lavrov, the Secretary of State, whatever his title is, and Putin. Just about everybody in Russia has said what? If our backs are up against the wall, really up against the wall, do not be surprised if we use nukes. The fact that that even came out of one person's mouth, let alone Putin, Lavrov, the Secretary of Defense, and the media, are we not listening? I, being a military officer for 15 years, know that our doctrine, our nuclear doctrine says what? We only have them as a deterrent. Nobody's dumb enough to use these. Ladies and gentlemen, I was an adversary officer in the United States Navy, which meant what? I read and know all of their stuff. You know what their nuclear doctrine is and they what they believe? Does anybody know what the Soviet nuclear doctrine is? You don't have to type it. They believe they can win. Why am I going on this tangent? Because it's SOT. It's not a tangent. Strategic Operational Tactical. Somebody tell me what this chart's going to look like. Oh, I'm inverted. Let me let me roll verted. <laughs> Let's go normal view. Can somebody tell me what the S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ is going to do when, not if, in my opinion, when on the lower third of your CNBC screen or Fox Business or whatever, it says breaking news, reports of a tactical nuke used in Ukraine. Tell me how you think the market's going to react. Now, if I sound dour or anything like that, trading, ladies and gentlemen, is combat. Trading is a form of combat. Somebody's going to win and somebody's going to get the rear end handed to them. I ain't a guy who likes getting his rear end handed to him that often. My job is to point out all the potential threats to this market. As a fighter pilot, as an options trader, I look at everything possibly bad that could happen. So when it doesn't, I am pleasantly surprised. I am still shocked that people are walking around in this market going, well, I think this is the bottom and you know we're going to go up. I'm like, are you, are you insane? This is why at Topkin Options, I will teach you to do SOT, Strategic Operational Tactical. Okay. I, John, trust me, I don't want to think about it, but I have to think about it. My job at Topkin Options is to teach you how to be an options trader and to, you, you got you to gotta grab your binoculars, folks. You're on the bridge of your SS portfolio. You cannot just be staring down here at your screen five feet in front of you. Grab your binoculars. Look downrange. And when I look downrange, folks, what do you think Xi Jinping is thinking about Taiwan? The president of the United States um, uh, weeks ago will defend Taiwan. Everybody in the White House. He didn't say that. And if he did, he didn't mean it. 
Joe Biden does not speak for the president. <laughs> I mean, that's almost. Uh, and now two days ago, the secretary of defense, Lloyd Austin, says what? We believe in a one China policy and we do not support Taiwan independence. So what is it like 70 percent of the semiconductors in the in the world are made in Taiwan? Folks, you got a war. In, I can't even believe I'm saying this in my lifetime. We have war in Eastern Europe. You know, Xi Jinping is going to do something with Taiwan, whether it's fifth generation warfare, where it's just kind of a soft takeover or it's a no kid and storm in the beaches type of thing. That's going to happen in the next couple of years as well. Why wouldn't he? Somebody tell me why Xi Jinping wouldn't. What's LeBron James not going to make his sneakers over there with Uyghur concentration camps or Apple? Of course they will. So there's your strategic brief. When I look around the globe and I put my radar out there, I don't see anything bullish. Again, it might sound horrific to you, but as an options trader, I'm smiling. This is a target. I love this. But again, I can't. I'm not. Let me remind you, I'm also whiz. Whiz in a flight suit as an American. I think it's awful. People dying in war. People it's this is a horror. But again, I'm fi- I'm bipolar, folks. And so am I. I'm 50 percent Gordon Gecko, 50 percent whiz. Whiz is broken hearted. Gordon Gecko. I'm going to print money. And I have been printing money and will continue to print money as the market implodes. All right operational brief. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great, this was a great article in the Wall Street Journal uh, today. This was, where is it? This was a, this is a long read, but this is, let me see if I can share this. This is the most, the best debrief that I've read in months on how everything got wrong. And this is, this is exactly, this is the quote. What did I just say? Trading's combat. We fought the last war. So the Fed did, you know, copied and pasted what they did from 2007 to 2009 to the pandemic. And they screwed it up. A year and a half ago, I said, raise rates, stop pumping money in. And I've been saying it ever since. Now, Jerome Powell, yeah, we should have not pumped as much money in and we should have raised rates sooner. So um, where's the chat? Let me drop this in the chat. Read this on your own uh, when, when you get a chance. This is absolutely worth the 10 minutes and a cup of coffee because if you're if you're kind of like you don't have situational awareness as to how we got into this clown car train wreck the wall street journal maps it out perfectly from janet to this trump's at fault too man he was a mess i and 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 i love when i'd criticize trump and people would hate me for it i'm like i i I hate hyper partisanship on the left or the right that dude was spending like a drunken sailor as well does anybody remember when the market was going up was going up under Trump. Rip your face off rally, everything's great. The dude was sending out tweets slamming the Fed chief like, well, if if he was doing what he was doing under my predecessor, we'd be doing even better. He wanted him to do QE and cut rates even more. This is before the pandemic, folks. So uh, all these people deserve scorn. So exactly, Peggy, anybody with a brain knew this. Anybody, I got to be honest with you, man. First world problems we laughed about. I took my fighter jet on the road this weekend and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have to sell my three kids to fill this jet up. But that's a different thing. Literally when I filled up my, I work from home, I trade from home. I'm actually sitting in my hangar today doing my brief uh, because rain damage to my roof from the hurricane and they're like drying my house out. Here's what I'm getting at. I rarely drive. It may, I, especially in South Florida, I'd rather get my teeth drilled and jump in my car and go anywhere. Um, I filled up my car today for the first time in a while. And here's when it hit me. Joe Biden, Janet Yellen, J, J, J Powell have no clue what we're going through. Can anybody tell me when you think the last time Joe Biden filled up his car or jet? These people drive around in limos and town cars. So when they stand at a podium and go, we get that everybody's hurting. They have no clue how bad it is out here, folks. So please read this when you get a chance. Okay. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow is a Fed meeting and a Fed announcement. The market, it's funny right now that the market is, we're doing a little bit of a tail wags the dog. Okay. What do I mean by that? Fed likely to consider a 75 point rise. Why am I bringing this up? Because they've been saying what? 50, 50, 50, 50. 
I think the last time they did a 50 point, a reporter actually asked Jerome, like, would you guys ever consider more than a 50? What about a 75? He's like, no, no. Yeah. You know, that, that's not needed. So the Wall Street Journal is usually the Fed whisperer. The Fed usually kind of plants a little in the Wall Street Journal to kind of prep the battlefield. They needed to do a 75 for the past couple Fed meetings. If they do this tomorrow, you ready for this? Even though I just, it sounded like the world was ending uh, with me. I think we get a relief bounce tomorrow. No matter what the Fed does, you know, th th their announcement is one thing, 0 0.75, 0 0.5, whatever it is. It's the press conference that kind of sets the tone. How many times have you seen in the time when they made the announcement, the market does X, Y, and Z, and then he starts talking and it does the exact opposite. So I think personally, we get a 75 point tomorrow. I'd be shocked if he didn't, because since he gave that language of, oh, we're only going to do 50, we don't need more than that. It's gotten worse. As I told you 20 minutes ago, when we hit 40 year high inflation four months ago, I was stunned. They needed to have a, an emergency Fed meeting that day with a full point increase. That would have done what? The market would have imploded and we'd be over it. We'd actually maybe be going up right now because it would have shown he was taking charge. I'm taking de decisive action. But him just kind of death by 50 basis point increases is we're all burning to death from inflation. Okay. So that's on the, you know, operational level that they completely got this wrong. Janet, Jay, Jerome, they all got it wrong. I don't care how many times fill in the blank gets up to a microphone and blames it on Vladimir Putin. It happened. It, it's been going on for a year and a half, folks. It ain't Vladimir Putin. Didn't help an invasion of Ukraine, but it, 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 Tatar, it's it's just it's a lie. So let's say peace in Ukraine tomorrow. Does inflation go away? If you read this article, folks, you ready for this? The Fed, who got this wrong, coming into it, thinks it's going to be at least, you ready? Three years. Three years we're going to be up here until we get back to their 2%. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, um, okay. Now, all right, Wiz, it's great. You scared the hell out of me, and uh, I can tell you're, you're, you're bearish. I, I don't care what I am, folks. I, you know, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I'm a fighter pilot, folks. I'm an options trader. Whatever the market is showing me, I have a tactic to fight it and profit. So, I, you know, again, I like markets that go up. People are happy. The wealth effect, it's kumbaya, Rodney King, can't we all get along? As an options trader, this is fantastic. Now, I saw, I, I'm not ignoring your questions, but I'm, I'm getting to that. For the people who, who are saying, is there a bottom in sight? And how do we know there's a bottom? Folks, I, you know, uh, uh, you know, John's a lot older than me, but John and I are old enough to remember what? Pat, I, hell, I was a flight instructor in, at Miramar at the time in a Marine squadron. When the dot-com bubble burst, I traded the 2010-ish malaise. Uh, I was in the board of trade uh, for the crash in 2008. I was in the CBOT. I was at ground zero, folks, in a volatility arbitrage firm in the 2008 fiasco. Well, here's why I'm, I'm, I'm not touting my resume. What I'm saying is this on your screen right now, ladies and gentlemen, none of this is panic selling. That might feel like a panic to you or this or that. You haven't, this, you know, we have not seen panic selling yet. And I know that that's not going to make a lot of people happy, but I'm not here to make you happy. I'm here to potentially make you money. What characterizes a bottom? There's 20, you ask 20 people, they'll give you 20 answers for a bottom. But take a look at the VIX right now. The VIX is down. What? Is the, what's the S&P doing right now? The S&P is eh, it's, it's half a point off. I'd call that flat in this market condition. The VIX is down. Whoa. 80% of the time, ladies and gentlemen, as the market goes down, the VIX goes up, right? 20% of the time, the market goes up and the VIX goes up. 
I, use, I have a little saying, market up, VIX up, something's up. One of the reasons the VIX is flat to down right now is what? We're kind of in a holding pattern, first of all, for Jerome tomorrow to see what he says, but also in a holding pattern to decide what? Are we going to halt this implosion at around 3,800? Let, let's go back. To, this is a better picture. Let's, let's do the five-year chart on the S&P. And here's, here's what I'm getting at. This is decision time. I'm in a market, uh, you know, this is no man's land or no person's land or no woman's land. These two lines that I'm drawing in red are magnets, plus or minus, however you want to do it. The market right here today is in, this is trench warfare, man. This is World War I. No, nothing lives in between these two. So we, we're either going to do this and get pulled back up to here and chop or we're going to keep going. So the VIX right now is actually, even though it, you might feel like panic selling or the, the VIX is elevated, is getting ready for a major move, either up or down, obviously. We are not going to find a, a happiness in this middle here. I guarantee you, I've been doing this for 32 years. One of these things is going to happen. It's, it's a foregone uh, conclusion. After listening to me for the past 40 minutes, you probably know what my bias is. But guess what? I love Colin Powell. Loved his book. Great American. He said, never get so close to your strategic position that when you're presented with new information, you don't change it. Meaning, if this thing decides to turn on a dime or whatever, I can do that as an options trader. I'm not some long only fund who's getting destroyed right now. As an options trader, man, I can change something in, in 10 seconds. But my bias is obviously down. So let's go back to the VIX and let's talk about some potential trades. So you are the pilot in command of your aircraft. I'm not a financial advisor, registered investment advisor, broker dealer. I don't play one on TV. Let's actually look at the, uh, uh, the pandemic, folks. I actually have to scroll out a little bit more. That's creepy. Look at that. Folks, we were up in the 70s and 80s. Now, of course, that was when we all thought we were dying from, you know, this, this was Soylent Green or a Charlton Heston movie, and it came back in. But, folks, we are right in the middle of this kind of post-pandemic trading range on the VIX. Something is going to give. Peace in Ukraine. Uh, the Fed says, no, everything's fine, or we're going to keep doing QE. or what? I, They physically... I sit here and I try and contingency plan about what the Fed could do, right? But as I said earlier, they're the arsonist and the firefighter. If they said, all right, we're done trying to fight this fire, the fire gets worse. Inflation, and remember, we, we, a couple of years ago, we calculated, we, we, we changed the way we calculate inflation. If we calculated inflation like we did when I was a kid under Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Carter would look like one of the best presidents. Inflation is up in the 20s, guys, legitimately old calculation. So here's what I'm getting at. Something's going to break and you're, you have to be Johnny on the spot. I don't, based on contango and backwardation and a bunch of different things, I don't trade the, the VIX outside of 30 days. Inside of 30 days, the VIX can be good to go. Outside of uh, uh, 30 days, there's a ton of uh, other things that you can trade. VXX, TVIX, VIXI, all sorts of things like that. Um, and these also have options, right? You know, on, on VXX, for example, let's take a look at VXX because it is kind of climbing out of the, uh, uh, the, the basement here. Um, what time is it? Uh, I got about 13 minutes. Okay, so let me at least show you one. Here's a couple things you can do. The first thing you can do is, I think you're right, this thing's gonna implode, the VIX is going to pop. The easiest thing you can do if you're new to options, I know this isn't like, because John has a people from all over. Uh, why isn't VIX coming up? There it is. Um, if you are new to options, you don't even know what a call or a put is. Well, guess what? The least you can do is maybe look at buying some upside calls on the VIX right now. Wow. Look at these. Holy crap. I haven't looked at this strike in a while. Look at that. Woo. Look at the upside calls in this VIX. 
104,000. Look at the volume and the open interest compared to what? The puts. So the skew, obviously, is most market participants are doing what? Betting. I hate using that term. That's the wrong term to use. Um, thinking that the volatility is going to pop. Let me, you know what? Let me clear this and let's see how high. Let's go. Let's open this up a little bit. Let's look at like 20 strikes. Whoa. I have not looked at this. Look at the, the 50 strike, the 65 strike, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let me be clear. This could be long only funds that are calling me begging to teach them how to trade options. It's a little late, but I'll, I'll certainly teach you for the right price to fly up to Greenwich. Look at that. You know what? Let, we got to open this up even more. We're going to let's see where the insanity goes. So, folks, there are people I will say betting. There are people who are betting that the VIX is going to double. Let's see if there are people betting on Armageddon. Wow. This is insanity, ladies and gentlemen. The 110 strike, folks, the VIX is at 33. Look at the 75 strike. Oh, my God. 80. So now some people might sit here and go, well, that's a crowded trade. Uh, who cares? And you might be one of the people that does this. Well, if everybody's betting volatility is going up, I'll be the contrarian. Folks, my 32 years of doing this, that works one time out of 10. <laughs> I mean, somebody, you can do that, but you'll be broke before your number comes up. Like, hey, the one time out of 10 that I went against the crowd, I was right. This, I, I did. I haven't looked at this uh, in a couple of days, folks. The upside on the VIX. This is insanity. So that's a lot of hedging going on. I guarantee you that's a lot of institutional folks buying upside calls on the VIX going, yay. So that's step one in dogfighting or trading volatility. If you know nothing about options, just the basics of a call and a put, go out in your jet, fly out in your time machine to the a month from now. Protect yourself for the next 30 days out to here, the July 22 expiration. This for the next, because folks, this is an extremely tactical market, isn't it? We're going to know in the next 30 days if this thing is either breaking higher or lower, right? So maybe go out 30 days from now. So, but let's take a look if you want to do some spreads, right? Let's take a look at the VXX. Let's take a look at that chart. A simple options trade on this might be a bull put spread, which is also called what? A credit spread, right? Maybe we go out. You know what? I, I wouldn't. I'm going, I'm going to talk through this trade, but I'm going to tell you I wouldn't do it. Well, why are you doing it? Because you might. Why wouldn't I do a bullish trade on volatility right now? The, now, the calls that I just talked about are different. Even if, well, I'm going to answer my question and then I'll clean both of this up because of what? This. If I put a bullish trade on volatility right now, short term, and he comes out and does this and says, we needed a 75, but you know what? I think I'm going to coast for a little bit. We will see a rip your face off relief rally and volatility will implode. OK, so I just I literally just got done an hour, hour and a half brief this morning with my TGO members where I said, what? This is tomorrow. This week for me is a popcorn week. What do I mean? It's a popcorn week. I want to sit here. I'm not deploying any capital to put it at risk because it's a coin flip. Jerome Powell could come out tomorrow and do exactly what I said. And the market rallies. Or he could even just do 50. But after you see this type of insane oversold condition, you usually get a little bit of a relief rally. Even though Jerome Powell shouldn't be looking at this, what, what, what is the Fed's mandate, folks? Inflation and full employment. There isn't a number three, but there is a number three. The number three, which is unwritten, is the Fed cares about the stock market and doesn't want it to fail. Not his job, but I guarantee you he's looking at this. After this recent route, which is, what, what's the saying? Markets take the escalator up and the elevator down. Well, this one, this took the window down. 
I am feeling that Jerome Powell, being Jerome Powell, and I've been following him for over a decade, is going to he's going to be tough tomorrow with the point seventy five in the decision, but he will be nice in the press conference or not super hawkish, meaning everything's he, he's good, man. When I watch his press conferences, the guy's good. He knows how to to shuck and jive and it's he's he's porridge. He's not too hot and he's not too cold. So I think he's going to let the 75 speak for itself and then kind of maybe do a little bit of damage control. Why am I saying this? Because that's my commit criteria. If there's any, I take, whether it was in the F-18 or in, in trading with real, uh, my real money, if I'm going to squeeze the trigger or push the pickle button to drop a bomb or fire a missile in anger or fire a trade with capital, I want a high probability that it's going to work. So I caught myself because I was like, oh, I'll show him a bullish trade. on." Oh, stop. Because of the Fed tomorrow. I would sit on my hands, man. I don't flip coins. I don't like gambling. I'm the guy that goes to Vegas and they, 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 they you know, maybe once it's like once every 15 leap years, you can drag me to a crab's table and I'll put 20 bucks down. And that's it. Cause I, it's just casinos don't look the way they look because they're a charity. <laughs> they don't give money away, man. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to gamble now Thursday in my Thursday morning at 10 AM brief. I am going to the, everything will be clearer. The dust will have settled from the fed and there will be clarity. Okay. So once something is known, it's known. I think we get a snapback rally to 3,800 tomorrow and Thursday. And then lower. I mean, you don't, you don't have to be a chartist to, you know, when you, I kind of drew these channels in January and every time we popped out of the, the top of the channel, what happened? It came back to it. So the trend, this is the trend guys. This is why I started my brief showing you the inverted chart and trying to change your strategic mindset. Okay, but at, at, at a minimum right now, especially if you're folks, if you're holding longs right now, if you are a long only fund and you didn't hedge or you didn't buy puts or you didn't do any of that stuff that you should have done that it would have taught you to do. This will help you sleep better at night. Fly out a month from now on the VIX, buy some upside calls, put them in a safe deposit box. And if things go to hell in a handbasket between now and the, a month from now, you're at least going to protect a little bit of your longs. You're going to make money on these calls exploding. Again, I haven't seen this upside call. I, it, I get it. If everybody's thinking Armageddon's coming, it might not happen. Great. Then if, if you believe that, what, what should you do? But you know what? Let me finish on that before I wrap up uh, and tell you about Topkin Options. If you're, this is the best thing about Topkin Options. Everything that I say, if you disagree with me, guess what you get to do? Do the opposite. That's why I love options trading, man. I love when my members are like, you know what, Wiz? I heard you and I'm doing the exact opposite. I'm like, all right, I'll see you at expiration. Thankfully, my career record is a 74% win rate. So I'm pretty happy about that. But anyway, here's what I'm getting at. If you're sitting here going, Wiz, uh-uh, it ain't going to break to the downside. The market's actually going to get a relief rally and we're going to get a good sustained rally for fill in the blank. You would buy puts on the VIX. Okay. So I forgot to mention that, but any, at any time you say, you know what, man, I like it. Your opinion well presented. I also think it's wrong. Do the exact opposite. Instead of buying calls on the VIX, buy some puts. That's exactly what you can do. I love, I love telling people, man, do the exact opposite uh, of what I do if that's <clears throat> in your game plan. All right. Uh, I want to, she's three minutes. I want to keep John on track. So I'm going to be really, really brief. I'm going to open up the doors to what we call full throttle. I do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, trade briefs from 10 to about 11, an hour uh, a day. Uh, I already showed you my one portfolio month to date. We're up about 40, 45 grand trading uh, the SPX and Amazon. And uh, man, it is just, uh, this is a target rich uh, environment uh, for what we do. It's only 295 a month. Uh, 
or $4.97 a month gets you into one of our investment clubs called the Hunters. Uh, got about 70 people in here. We trade live throughout the day. It's one of our investment clubs. We are I'm live online throughout the day. Every trade that I post live is in here. And you also get, this is my instructor dashboard, obviously. It doesn't look like this. Yours looks a lot cleaner. Um, but all your fellow members' trades are posted in here uh, as well. Uh, everybody posts all their trades that they're doing. Mine is kind of highlighted in blue since I'm kind of the instructor. Uh, but that's a little bit more each month, obviously, since you're getting me 24-7. I post my intel in here. I get something from a buddy on Wall Street. I get something from a buddy in the Pentagon. I immediately throw it over the fence, and you guys get what I get. I started these investment clubs, folks, with the COVID crash. I did it with the COVID crash, and um, you know we, we absolutely crushed it. Uh, I started these things because people are like, all right, man, I, I got to know what you're doing outside of the live trade brief. So I'm like, all right, I guess legally we can do that in, in what's called an investment club. So $295 a month gets you into the Monday through Thursday briefs. The $497 gets you into the all the briefs and the investment club where I post everything live throughout the day, all my intel, all my everything like that. And obviously... I'm no rocket surgeon, but this is the best deal. $29.95 for a year. That is a 50% discount. This is a steal. I mean, as a businessman, I'd love for you to do this for a year. Don't. Do the annual. It's only $29.95. I did an S&P 500 trade yesterday. I think that made $2,500. So in one trade, one day, I can potentially pay for your entire uh, annual uh, membership. So sorry, I went long. Sorry, I didn't have a ton of time to debrief, uh, you know, all, all of my offers here. But, you know, this this is a no brainer. Two hundred ninety five bucks a month. I'm going to uh, out to dinner here tonight in Fort Lauderdale. I guarantee you the wine and the dinner that I'm going to buy is going to be a hell of a lot more than that. And I'm not bourgeois. I'm just a normal dude. So two hundred ninety five bucks just for to try this out for a month uh, is 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 pretty damn uh, is pretty damn good. Uh, Frank, if you're interested in the uh, lifetime membership, shoot me an email, whiz, W-H-I-Z, at, at Top Gun Options. One more question, and then I got to give it back to John. Wiz, what is your best Thank guesstimate? You. Are you more inclined to seeing a bump tomorrow in the short term or more downside? Arthur, I see a bump tomorrow. I see a bump. I see a relief rally. We're way oversold right now. I think Jerome tries to soothe the past week or so. But it, any sell every rip, do not buy the dips. Any sort of relief rally or, or rip, bear markets can have rallies. I would sell the rips and not buy the dips until further notice. On that note, my brother, John, I salute you. Carry out the plan of the day. And uh, thanks again for having me, my brother. I appreciate it. All right, Captain Matt. Uh, always a pleasure to have you on. And <clears throat> exchange notes about the uh, realities of Top Gun. Uh, and great presentation. I know people made a lot of money uh, with Matt's service over the years, and um, that's why they keep coming back for more. So, uh, Matt, you have a good summer. Uh, fly safe, and uh, I'll be in touch. I appreciate it, bro.